In this lesson, we're going to use a TI graphing calculator to graph a quadratic function and then use the calculator to determine the value of the x-intercepts, y-intercept, and vertex. In order to graph this function, we're going to enter the function in y equals on the top left-hand corner. So we're going to go into y equals, and then we're going to enter 0, decimal 6. This is the variable key, so we're going to hit the variable key, and then squared, plus 3 x, there's the variable key again, and then plus 2. And then if you take a look at the window, this is the default. So we're going to go on the x-axis from negative 10 to positive 10 with a scale of 1. So every one unit there's going to be a tick mark. On the y-axis we're going to go from negative 10 to positive 10 with a scale of 1. So we're going to go over here to graph now and we're going to take a look and see there is that parabola. I'm going to begin with the y-intercept because we know that the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. If we enter a 0 0 in for the x, that term is gone. If we put a 0 here, 3 times 0 is 0, that term is gone, leaving us with the c value for a quadratic in standard form. So we already know that the c value happens to be 2, but if we don't have a quadratic written in standard form, we might have to get it using technology. So what we're going to do is you can see that above this trace key here, we have the calculator menu. To access that menu, we're going to press second function, trace, and then number one allows us to enter the value of any x-coordinate on that parabola. So because we know the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to zero, we're gonna press zero, enter, and then we have a y-intercept of two, which we know is the y-intercept on that particular parabola. So these are the keystrokes we can use. So second function trace, number one lets us put any value in for x. Knowing that the y-intercept will always have an x-coordinate of zero, we can get it that way. We can also use these same keystrokes to find the value of any other coordinate point along this parabola. So if we were to go second function trace, let's say we want to figure out what is the y value when x is, let's go negative 5. So we can see on our parabola when x is negative 5, y has a value of positive 2. If we go second function trace, let's see what is the value of y when x is, let's try maybe 1. So now we can see when x is 1, y has a value of 5.6. In that same second function trace menu, you can see that we also have the option of the minimum or the maximum value. So we know that's the vertex. So based on this standard form that we're given, we already know the y-intercept is positive 2. We also know that because my a value is positive, we're going to be opening up. If a parabola opens up, we have a minimum. This is the lowest point on that parabola. So because it opens up, I'm going to choose number 3 minimum. We're going to do b and get the vertex next. We're going to kind of work from the bottom to the top here. And then you can see that your calculator prompts you. So right here is the cursor. On the bottom of your calculator, it gives you the coordinates for where that particular cursor is. If you can't see the cursor, then look on the bottom of your screen here and your calculator tells you where it is. And then your calculator also prompts you. So it says, are we left bound? Are we to the left of that vertex? So this is the vertex. If you imagine a vertical line going up and down, we need to be on the left hand side of that. So don't go up and down that's going to take your cursor off of that function we're only going to use those left and right arrows so I'm going to move left you can hold it down so we're going to scoot our cursor over and so now that we're on the left side of that vertex we're going to press enter so we're going to tell our calculator that we are on the left side we're going to press enter then the calculator says, are we on the right side? Are we right bound? So if this is my vertex, I'm now going to hit the right arrow. We're going to move over so that we're on the right side, as long as you're on the right side, but close to the vertex, and we're going to press enter again. Now the calculator says, do you want me to guess? And if you look at the top of it, you can see that there's little arrowheads here. This is the range where my calculator is going to be guessing, is somewhere in there, and that is where the vertex lies. So I'm going to press enter to say yes, that's where we want you to guess. And then this is the coordinate point of that vertex. And then when you write that down, because this represents an ordered pair, we need to write round brackets around it. If the question doesn't tell you what to round to, I'm just going to leave the exact value. So negative 2.49 etc. That's our x coordinate. Negative 1.75 is the y coordinate separated by a comma. So second function trace, you have to decide first of all, based on the direction of opening, do we have a minimum or a maximum that indicates which of those you choose. Move the cursor to the left of the vertex, press enter. Move the cursor to the right of the vertex, press enter. Press enter one more time for the calculator to guess where that vertex is. 
This is the ordered pair that represents the coordinate point of the vertex for this parabola. So it's always that second function trace that brings you up to the menu that allows us to get specific points. So you can see we've done number one, number three, and number four. Number five, you might remember from grade 10, that's if we have two graphs and we're looking for that point of intersection. We are not going to be using six or seven. So that brings us to number two, that's the last one, the zeros. Zeros are another way of saying the x intersection. We're going to begin the same way. Please grab your calculator and try this to make sure you're able to get the correct values and then I'll move my calculator in a second so you can see those keystrokes. So I've already gone second function trace and we're going to choose number two, zero. And then again, you can see where the cursor currently is. I can see that I crossed the x-axis two times. So this particular parabola has two x-intercepts. I'm going to begin with the one on the left. And again, you want to imagine that there is a vertical line passing through that intercept. My cursor needs to be on the left hand side of that. So I'm going to hold this down until I'm on the left. We want to be close, but on the left. And then I'm going to press enter. Then my calculator says, am I on the right? So I need to be on the right hand side of that intercept. So again, imagine that line. I'm going to be a little bit below the X axis. So we're going to move there and then we're going to hit enter and then the calculator says do you want me to guess and again look at the arrows it's going to be guessing in between there and in that range that is where the x-intercept falls so I'm going to press enter one more time and that's going to give us the first x-intercept. So again this doesn't tell me what to round to so I've written just dot 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 to show that x value keeps going and again we know we have x-intercepts when y is equal to zero. Now I need to do the second one so we're going to go back second function trace number two and then again the cursor says are we on the left well this time we're doing this one so if you imagine there's this vertical line if I'm on the left and below that x-axis so I'm going to scoot my cursor over so that I'm close and because I can see if there's a vertical line you can even take your pencil and just run it along here if I'm on the left I'm going to be below that x-axis so I'm looking for a negative y coordinate so I'm going to press enter then it says are we on the right so this time again imagine that vertical line if it's going through here we're now going to be on the right hand side we're going to be above the x-axis our y is now going to be positive so and as long as you get close your calculator is pretty good at guessing so now do we want to guess and look at those arrows our calculator is going to be guessing within there so that is where that second x-intercept is so we're going to press enter and there's the value of the second one and I've written those two values down as ordered pairs. So this is our first x-intercept, this is our second x-intercept, and we know that x-intercepts occur when y is equal to zero. If they told you to round, if I was rounding, let's say to the nearest tenth, the tenth is one decimal place, this is a zero, so this would stay as negative 4.2. This is a seven in the tenth position, but there is a number higher than five following it, so that would bump this to an eight, so we would have negative 0.8. So watch what to round to if it tells you. If it doesn't, I just indicated that this number is going to keep going. Once we've identified these points, we can now go ahead and state what is the domain and range for this particular parabola. So I can see with the domain, even though my calculator window only shows this much, I'm going to just kind of draw arrows on here just so that we remember this function is actually going to continue on. This is just what we have the window set. So I can see that the domain along this x axis, it's going to be all real numbers of x. So we'll say the domain is a set of x values such that x is an element of the real number. So as this goes along, it's widening out, we're going to eventually be touching all values of x. The range, we can see that this is the lowest point. So we're looking at the y coordinate of the vertex, and we're going to say that the range is all y values equal to that point and greater than that point. The range is a set of y values such that y is greater than or equal to the y coordinate of the vertex, and y is an element of the real number system. So we're going to take that y coordinate of the vertex, and that's going to go here and then this inequality depends on if we have a maximum or minimum are we opening up or down the axis of symmetry remember is a vertical line passing through the vertex so we're going to be crossing that x-axis at that negative 2.49 so the equation of that line and it always wants the equation of that line with the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals and then we're going to get that value here from the x coordinate of the vertex the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry the axis of symmetry is passing through that x-coordinate of the vertex. 
Our final question is an application question where we're given the function of a polynomial, but now we're given a context or a situation describing what this represents. So in this particular case, we have a skier who is jumping and then we can see their path through the air models a parabola before they land. We're told that Y represents the height above ground. We're also told that X represents the time that the skier is in the air. So the first thing that we always want to do is to draw a sketch and we're going to label the axes with what it represents, including the units. So our Y axis represents the height in meters. Our X axis represents the time the skier is in the air in seconds. We know that the y-intercept in this function is going to be 1, so we can plot that point. We also know that our a value is negative, so that tells us the parabola is opening down. The first thing that we need to determine is the skier's maximum height. When we graph the function, we're going to have the parabola continuing on, but we're just specifically looking at where does that skier start when time is 0, and they're going to stop their jump right here when they hit the ground. We're going to enter this function into our calculator and then we're going to take a look at that graph and I can't quite see the top so I'm going to go back into the window and I can see that the x-axis is okay. On the y-axis I want the maximum to go up a little bit higher. So let's go down here and y maximum. We're currently at 10 and we're not that far away. So let's maybe try 15. I'll link a video in the description box below if you need to see how the window works again. Okay, so now that we can see it, we're going to go second function trace because we open down we have a maximum so I'm going to choose number four and then we're going to go so that we're on the left side of that vertex press enter and then we're going to move our cursor so that we are on the right side and get close to it now your calculator prompts you so it says are you on the right side we're going to press enter to say yes and then do you want to guess and we're between there so we're going to press enter one more time and that is going to give us the coordinates of the vertex. This is why it's helpful to have a sketch. We are asked specifically for the maximum height. So if you take a look at your axes, we can see that height is represented on that y axis. So we want the y coordinate of the vertex and it also says we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So because we're rounding to the nearest tenth, that four is in the tenth position, take a look at the number that comes after. Because this is a five or higher, it's higher than a five, it's going to bump that up one place. So our maximum height is 12.5 meters and it's really important that you put the appropriate units on there. The second thing we have to do is to state the range of the function for this particular context. So if we take a look here we can see that this is the highest point on the y-axis but we're going to stop when we get to zero. So this is the end point of our graph. We're not going to continue going down here because again that y-axis represents height. So when the height is zero, we are on ground level. If we were to go into the negatives here, that means with our skier is burrowing underground. So we want to make sure that we stop here. So in terms of the range, we're going to say the range is, now you can use y, but because my range represents height on that y-axis, I just chose to use the variable h. So it is the height that, and then we say height is greater than or equal to zero. So we start at zero and go up and height is less than or equal to 12. So we start at that 12.5, that is the y maximum for that parabola, and we go down. So between zero and 12.5, that's where that graph lies on the y-axis, and the height is an element of the real number system. So remember, anytime you're between two numbers, we want the variable in the middle, your arrowheads are pointing to the left, the small number has to go first, and then we have the largest number on the right-hand side here. So height is greater than or equal to zero, height is less than or equal to, so it's between zero and 12.5, including those values. And then in our last question, it tells us that the skier increases his speed before jumping. And so we now have a new function. So we're changing that X value and we're looking for how much higher did the skier go on this jump? So we can see that the maximum height on the previous jump was 12.5. Let's graph this function now and see what the vertex is. And make sure this is a negative in front. So when you enter this, make sure you press the negative key and then we're going to take a look to see what the graph looks like and again we need that maximum we can't quite see it so on my y axis we're going to increase that y maximum so I'm going to go down here to y maximum and then we're not that far off so maybe let's try 20. Now if I'm going from negative 10 to negative 20 that's 30 units I don't want to have a tick mark every one unit so I'm going to change the scale to 5 so that means every 5 units there will be a tick mark so this is 5, 10, 
10, 15, 20. Oh, and I can't quite see it yet. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. So let's maybe, I'm actually going to go to 30. Then we will for sure be able to see it, hopefully. <laughs> so take a look here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now again, second function trace, we have a maximum. So we're going to choose number four. And we can see where the cursor currently is. We're going to go to the left. And then we're going to move it over here to the right and then enter to guess. And there is the coordinates of our new vertex. And again, height is on the Y axis. So we want that Y coordinate of the vertex. This is how high we currently are jumping or the skier is currently jumping. He previously jumped that high. If we take the difference between them, that tells us how much higher he jumped on the second height. It doesn't tell us what to round to. So I'm just going to leave that as an exact answer, but make sure you include the appropriate units.